In this section, what we're going to do is talk about the page tpl.php file. This is our page template. To begin, let's go ahead and look at the structure of the page template and figure out where its domain begins and ends. So in our previous video, what we did was we set up a sub-theme to the Bartik theme called bat overrides and put it in our sites all themes directory. This has just the basic bare bones of a sub-theme and we're putting our templates in the templates folder. What I'm going to do is copy the page.tpl.php file from Bartik, which is in our themes Bartik directory and in our templates directory inside of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it inside of our templates directory in our bat overrides theme. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and let's take a look. I'm going to scroll down to where the HTML begins. So you see here we start with a page wrapper and a page div. Now this is at the very outside of our page template. And to understand where this starts, we really need to step back one more step and look at one more template called HTML. Now you can get to this by going to your modules directory, scrolling down to the system module, expanding it, and opening up the html.tpl.php file. Okay, the HTML in this file is pretty simple, but let's look at it so we get a sense of where our page starts. So we have our doc type and HTML opening tags. And if you've ever built HTML templates, you have a sense of what these are. These are typically always going to be our opening tags for a web page. We have our head. Inside our head, we're printing out a head variable. We have our title. We have styles and scripts, so all of our CSS style sheets and JavaScripts, and the, then the end of the head. We have our body tag, which opens here, and then closes here along with our closing HTML tag. Now, html.tpl.php takes care of two regions called page top and page bottom, but everything else it passes on to the page template, which is printed out right here. Okay, so now we have a sense of where the domain starts. Let's go ahead and jump back to the page.tpl.php file. Okay, we have our header region, which begins here. We have our logo, our site name and site slogan. And go ahead and scroll down. We're printing out a rendered region here for the header. We're printing out menus, the secondary menu, which appears below the main menu. We have messages, which are the display messages that show up on a Drupal site when an action is taken and some confirmation is needed, or there's an error message that needs to be displayed. Featured is a particular Bartek region. We have our breadcrumbs, scrolling down. We have our first sidebar, our main content, as we scroll down, we'll see the content displayed in several sections here. And then we're closing things out. We have our second sidebar, our triptych, which are three columns that appear below the main content. I'm going to scroll down a little further. And then we have our footer region. So this is what's happening in our page.tpl.php file. So if you think of something that you want to change that belongs in any of those categories, then it's possible that page.tpl.php is the template you need to modify. Next, let's talk about some template suggestions for page.tpl.php. Most of the time you're going to want to change the page template only based on specific conditions. So let's talk about what conditions we can trigger by simply changing the name of the page template file. Okay, our base template file name is page.tpl.php and this covers all the pages on a Drupal site. If we want to change just the home page, we're going to use page-front.tpl.php and this will get applied to any page that is assigned to the front page in the site settings on a Drupal site. Let me go ahead and leap to where this is set in the Drupal settings. So we have our configuration option up here. We're going to go to system and site information. And in here towards the bottom, 
we can set our default front page right here. And so whatever this is set to, the page dash dash front will display for that particular page. Now the page template file is special in that we can apply a page template to virtually any page on the site, specifically through the file name. One important thing to keep in mind is that when we're working with specific paths to a Drupal page, that we're dealing with internal paths rather than aliases. So for example, node slash and then a number, for example here, node slash 34, is an internal path. And you can tell what the internal path is by using the get q variable that we've used in previous videos, and we'll demonstrate how to use that in just a moment. But if we use that, then we always know that that's going to be the internal path. A lot of times nodes will have aliases that match up with their title, for example, or their location in a section of the site, but that's not the URL that we want. We want the particular path that's used internally. So for node 34, we have a couple of options that will work. The way that the naming convention is processed for page template files is it looks for each section separated by slashes and separates them by double hyphens. And if something matches the first one, for example, say page dash dash node dot tpl dot php, then that will match node slash 34. But it will also match any node slash and then some number or some text as well. If we want to be further specific to target just this node, then we can use page dash dash node dash dash 34 dot tpl dot php. Now notice that we're separating the particular components that are divided by a slash inside of the path by double hyphens in the file name for the page template file. Let's look at another example. Node slash 34 slash edit. Now this is unique because that inside variable, the 34, will be variable depending on what node we're editing. But chances are we want to edit the page template that applies to all node slash and then whatever number slash edit. And the way that this cascades into the file name is this way. It removes those variable numbers and instead just uses the beginning and ending part for that path. So we're working with page dash dash node dash dash edit. Notice there's no 34 there. And this will apply to all of the edit pages four nodes. In this third example, we're at admin slash appearance slash settings. And because we have two slashes here or three parts to our path, there's three options for us. We can use page dash dash admin dot tpl dot php, page dash dash admin dash dash appearance, or page admin appearance settings. Now much of the time our theming is going to be more on the front end rather than through the admin pages, but the admin pages provide a useful set of paths that represent the variable structures that you'll find on the front end as well. So here we looked at a path that includes a variable at the end, one that includes a variable number in the middle, and one that includes several components to the path and we saw how we can adjust our page template file name in order to match the particular situation that we're looking for.